guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Laura and you are watching The Natural Life. So if you watched my last video, um, I told you that I am going to be adding more videos each month to my channel. And in January on Fridays, I am going to be presenting easy ways that you can change your health for the better. And I figured to start us off with that series, I'm gonna go ahead and do beverages. I have compiled a total of five tips. Uh, you can choose one, you can choose all of them, you can not choose any. Uh, they're just ideas of mine that I'm passing out to you guys. At the end of the video, I'm gonna tell you how I broke my caffeine addiction. So tip number one, possibly the hardest, so, one and two are the hardest and then they get easier. Number one is uh, my ultimate tip would be eliminate alcohol or really restrict it. Now, I know that alcohol is a very social thing. Honestly, I stopped drinking about three and a half years ago and that was probably the best thing I've ever done for my health. I had gotten to the point where I only drank about once a week, you know, maybe on the weekends going out with friends or whatever, but I got to the point where I could have one drink and the next day I would be done on the couch, in bed, on the floor. It was bad news bears. So I thought, well, I'm just going to stop drinking for a month. And after that month, I realized that I didn't want to drink. If you do want to drink, I, from my research, it sounds like Ciroc is the best choice. It's vodka that is made from distilled grapes. There's no grains in it or anything. Of course, if you want to celebrate a big event or milestone in your life with a couple, you know, champagne toast, it's not going to hurt you to have, you know, a vibe here and there. But I, my number one tip would be to significantly cut down on alcohol, save it for special occasions. That probably just made me super unpopular with you guys, but uh, my second tip might make me even less popular, and that is to uh, eliminate daily caffeine intake, significantly cut down on caffeine. Now having a cup of coffee or you know even a healthier version of a soda a couple of times a week isn't terrible. It's when it's to the point of addiction where you cannot function without your caffeine, you're having withdrawals. With caffeine is a stimulant. It increases our heart rate, which can make us feel anxious, keep you really wired. But the, the worst contributing factor in my mind of caffeine is that it can lead to adrenal fatigue um, among with other factors. And if you have adrenal fatigue, you know that it is no walk in the park. So you guys hate me now, but in the meantime, until you can break your caffeine addiction, um, and then when you do wanna indulge in caffeine, I recommend a few healthier alternatives. So for coffee, if you're drinking coffee, regular coffee is so heavily pesticided. Full of pesticides? Or you would phrase that correctly. It is full of pesticides. So when you are drinking regular coffee, you're drinking straight pesticides, straight poison. Um, I could do a whole other video on pesticides, but basically it impacts your health extremely negatively and organic coffee, does not do that. So I would switch to organic coffee if you are a coffee drinker and you love your coffee in the morning or at night or during whenever you drink your coffee. Tip number four is for soda drinkers. Um, if you are going to drink a conventional soda, a sugary, like real sugar soda is actually better for your health than a diet soda because the Artificial sweeteners are so bad for your health. Aspartame, of course there are other ones, but they're all sort of similar. Um, aspartame, also known as NutraSweet or Equal, your body actually processes aspartame into formaldehyde. Now we all know formaldehyde is horrible, causes tons of health ramifications just by breathing it. So this is something that we're ingesting that actually turns into formaldehyde inside of our bodies. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Dr. McCullough, but um, he has an article on his website saying it's actually the most dangerous substance that's added to foods on our market, period. I just, I just want to read you some of the adverse reactions that people have to aspartame reported by the FDA. And those are headaches, migraines, dizziness, seizures, nausea, numbness, muscle spasms, 
weight gain, rashes, depression, fatigue, irritability, tachycardia, tachycardia, I should say that word because I get it, insomnia, vision problems, hearing loss, heart palpitations, breathing problems, um, anxiety, slurred speech, loss of taste, tinnitus, vertigo, memory loss, and joint pain. Aspartame can also trigger some chronic illnesses and other conditions like brain tumors, MS, epilepsy, chronic fatigue, Alzheimer's, lymphoma, fibromyalgia, and diabetes, and that is from the FDA. I'm not reading you some sort of holistic, if, I mean, obviously, I believe in natural health, but there are people out there who think that natural health and alternative medicine, holistic healthcare is um, like voodoo witchcraft. And that is straight from the FDA, you guys. That is not something that I've made up. I understand the need for a cool, fizzy, delicious, sweet refreshment because I used to love regular soda and diet soda. I personally have switched to healthier versions that I want to share with you. Number one is Zevia. Zevia is a soda, but it is sweetened only with xylitol and stevia. Now stevia, if you guys don't know, is the most healthy sweetener on earth. It is a plant leaf. Um, it's no sugar, no carbs. Your body doesn't process it like any other sugars. It doesn't affect your blood sugar levels. Um, it's zero calories, it's incredible, and but I feel like most people know what stevia is. Now xylitol might be a little more foreign to you. Now xylitol is a sugar alcohol. It has no sugar content or calories, but it does have a little bit of carb content. It's sort of confusing. I can I will post a definition of sugar alcohol in the down bar. So this can of Zevia, this is the cherry cola flavor. It tastes almost exactly like wild cherry Pepsi. It is delicious. It has zero calories, zero sugars, zero protein, and then four grams of erythritol, which leads, which is where the four car, four grams of carbohydrates comes from. This stuff is incredible. There's so many different flavors. There are caffeinated flavors. There are non-caffeinated flavors along the same lines. Is Lacroix? Lacroix is literally one of my favorite things ever. Um, there's so many flavors. They're all so refreshing and bubbly and flavored, but they also have great scents. If you just want like a delicious, refreshing beverage that isn't plain water, I love LaCroix. Uh, LaCroix is, there's so many flavors there, especially now there's these new ones. There's apricot and mango, but there's regular ones like lime, lemon, orange, cran, raspberry, so many flavors. You can find these literally anywhere. Zevias are harder to find, but you can find LaCroix literally anywhere. My third recommendation in this category, if you need a yummy flavored beverage that isn't soda or coffee, is herbal teas. Like this one, this is roasted dandelion root tea. It's organic from traditional medicinals. It smells good, it tastes really good, but the dandelion root is really great for your uh, supporting your liver and promoting detoxification. So not only are you getting a really delicious tasting beverage, but it has some health benefits as well. I have so many great tea recommendations. I am obsessed with tea. And if you guys want to hear more about my favorite teas and where to find them, click this link here. I did a whole video pretty much on my favorite flavors of tea. Tip number five is obviously drink more water. Um, one of the biggest problems with pretty much all of us is that we are dehydrated and we don't really realize it unless we're very conscious about drinking enough water throughout the day. And easy ways to do that, one is grab a cup, buy a couple big Nalgene's if you don't already have some, and then make sure that you drink a whole Nalgene by certain times of the day. One when you wake up, one say at 11, one at three, etc. Or if you just don't really love the taste of plain water, you could do infused waters, which is one of my favorite things as well. And you could buy something fancy like this, which is a water pitcher infuser, but you certainly don't need this. All you need is just a pitcher or even your glass and put the things that you want to infuse into it in the pitcher or glass. Coarse fruit infused water is probably what comes to mind first, but don't forget the yummy vegetables and fresh herbs too. One of my favorite concoctions is just sliced thinly orange, lime, and lemons. Cucumber lime, cucumber mint, cucumber basil, depends on if you want spa water or fruity water, um, strawberry basil, watermelon, strawberry basil. Possibilities are literally endless. 
Okay, and now the part that some of you have probably been waiting for, which is how I quit my caffeine addiction. Now, I should probably preface this by saying my caffeine addiction was a very short amount of time, and it was this past summer. I was kind of confused why, like, it was so hard to get off of caffeine because I'd never drank enough of it to get addicted to it. But this summer, we were in the midst of moving and a couple other life events, and I just, like, really needed some Zevia in the mornings. And so I was drinking my Zevia or, um, you know, even some days if I was in a pinch of regular soda just to get going in the morning. And I only drank about half a can of soda, which is about four ounces. So I, what I did is I, you know, I realized, okay, I'm drinking four ounces. I'm gonna bring that down a notch by 25%. So I went down to three ounces and I got like a little measuring cup and measured exactly three ounces. So I had those three ounces for three days in a row. After those three days, I went down another notch to two ounces. Um, so I had the two ounces for a, a second chunk of three days. After those three days, so a total of six days now, I went down to one ounce stayed on that for three days although I think I probably could have stopped because one ounce really isn't that much caffeine if you drink significantly more caffeine than that which I'm guessing most of you do if you cut down one day and 25% you're getting withdrawal symptoms go to 10% so basically go down increments every three days whether 25% or 10% whatever your body is allowing you to do do whatever you have to do so that you are successful and healthy getting off caffeine is really hard and I don't want you guys going through withdrawal just for the sake of getting off of it because you can do it without withdrawal symptoms let me know in the comments below if you are planning to implement any of these tips in January to get healthier and also let me know what your favorite beverage is thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time bye guys